getting started in ceramics um, was when I was in middle school and high school. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. And at the time, I was struggling with what do I do with my life? And um, I decided through everything um, that I should probably go into engineering like every <laughs> like everybody else thinks I should probably go into engineering. Um, but my heart was always with any form of art, but especially ceramics. And when I moved out here for an engineering job, one of my friends at work um, was a member at Lowell Makes. And uh, we were playing tennis and he said, you should really check this place out. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Like I didn't know anybody here and stuff. And he was like, no, just come. And so I did. And I, I really started with ceramics in earnest once I got to Lowell Makes. Um, it was the chapter where I said, I'm not gonna let the wheel beat me. And I came here and I spent hours on it. It was like my, um, my thing that I did outside of work and it helped me de-stress and it helped me start to meet people because there's so many people here. Um, but most nights I was here by myself. It was great though because um, I got to meet people at a comfortable pace and I made loads of friends you know, over time. Um, and I, I just kind of kept doing it and I wasn't sure if I was really gonna use my membership or not. And um, as it turns out, I ended up spending so much time here that I was like, okay, I need to do the annual membership because I know I'm gonna be here. And I also thought when I got here, oh my God, I'm gonna get checked out in every shop. And um, no, I haven't really made it out of ceramics. I, I got checked out in 3D printing, so I printed some stamps. Um, and uh, my friend Tanner made my Potter stamp. So that's one collaboration that I did here with friends. Um, and my friend Toph also is in the process of making my beautiful sign for my studio that's gonna go up that I'm so proud of. So I'm, I'm delighted with that. And um, my friend Ben that does metal work is working on making the piece that it's gonna hang from. And I think Toph's helping on that project too. So it's like, it's like when I walk into my new space that it was owned by the, the previous president of Lowell Makes too. <laughs> so this studio space that I got, um, when, I, when I started this hobby, I did not anticipate it to get to this point. I did not have any kind of goal. I'm just doing it for me. And it's just been so enjoyable in so many different ways um, that it's just grown into me having a studio at Western Ave and um, when Rio was moving, um, he said, do you wanna take over this space? And I wasn't sure. And I thought about it and I said, you know what, I'll, I'll just apply and see what happens. So I put in my application and it got approved. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I, I'm gonna have a studio now. I think the combination of um, having a career that's so technical versus having a hobby that is so, not type A, um, it's, it feels really like completing or f I guess fulfilling um, to be able to do the, the difficult work, the, the really technical, um, I forget which one's left brain and which one's right, right brain, but um, to have that and then also be able to turn it over and say, I know the rules of of this hobby. I know, you know, I can get as technical as I want to, but I don't have to and do what I, I feel is right. And that feels right to other people too. And that's really nice. I don't have to think about what are other people gonna like? What should I make that I think other people are gonna like? But if I like it, somebody else is gonna like it. I'd say my art style combines elements of realism with a little bit of whimsy, a lot of, uh, let's see what's gonna happen <laughs> when, I, when I mix these glazes together. Um, I really like to just use different tools in different ways and see what kind of textures come out of it. And thinking about what that looks like or what that could look like if I did this, if I did that, and then making something out of that. I really like trying things that I haven't tried before. So most of the things that I have in my studio are just kind of one of a kind pieces that I, 
I probably won't make again, but if somebody requests something, I that's another thing I really like is to do commissions. So what I really like more than anything is when people love the thing that I made. And so I guess that's that's a big part of why I like to make commissions. And when people show some kind of like positive reaction to the things that I made, that's helping to steer my art style and the things that I like to make, as well as just stuff that makes me happy, because that's at the end of the day, that's I'm, I'm not gonna do something that I don't like. So I, I wanna be able to influence people and affect people in a positive way. And I guess that that comes through in the pieces that I make, but I think it also comes through in that making pieces isn't the necessarily the biggest part of what I enjoy about this. Getting to be part of a community of people who also really love doing this hobby or other hobbies where and we get to collaborate or just hang out getting to teach classes and introduce other people to the same thing that makes me really happy and getting to just enjoy nice evenings with with other people and bonding over clay is like just so incredible and now getting to join into the community at western ave and um, meeting people with different disciplines um, where we may or may not collaborate ever, but we can still support each other and um, commission things from each other or do a trade um, or just enjoy a beer. I think one of the things that kind of solidified this hobby for me um, was when I, I was trying really hard to learn the wheel, but I wanted to do it on my own. I wanted to learn everything on my own. I don't know why. And so I was just struggling all the time to just like try and I'm like trying to sense what's happening and figuring it out and stuff. And that was actually, that was a lot of fun. It really occupied my mind, which is what I needed. Um, and I remember that I, I put things on the shelf to get bisque fired. And during the day, there were a few other people here and somebody was looking at the shelf and went, that person's a potter, that person's a potter, that person's a potter, and I was one of the people that they named. And I was like, I'm a potter. You know, that it means that I, I'm actually able, like I actually did it. And like, that was really, I felt a little bit accomplished, you know, that I was able to make something that other people approved of without knowing that I was the one that made it. And then another time, a more recent time, when we did the Christmas market in conjunction with Western Ave Studios, I had my table set up for Lowell Makes, representing Lowell Makes, and um, I had made this mushroom mug and I didn't think it was gonna sell because it was th so much work at went into it that I had to charge what I thought was fair. And so I put it up on the shelf and I said, I know it's gonna come home with me, but I just want people to see what I can do. And I had some comments on it. And then I had this lady come over and she was looking at it. And then um, she walked away and then she came back and she was like, can I hold it? And I was like, okay, she, like, she knows that this is something that's valuable. And so she was so careful and she picked it up and she's looking at it and admiring it and she put it back down. And I, I knew she was thinking about it. And she said, I, I have to ask how much it is. And I went like, okay, you know, people see value. And I said, well, you know, it's, it's by far the most expensive thing here. I would take an offer, you know, I'm thinking 275, but you know, I understand. And can I tell you a little bit about it? How much work went into it? Um, cause people don't know how, how time consuming the make is, but then glazing, it can be even more time consuming. Um, and also just like having the ability to not create bubbles and not create pinholes and all those things and the layering and all that. Um, so I told her a little bit about it and she was like, no, I'm, I'm going to take it. I was like, I'd take 250 and she was like, no, I will pay. And, um, it was a gift for her, one of her friends. And she thought her friend would really like it. And she felt that that was worth giving to her friend. The moment when I realized that she was going to buy it, um, I just like my heart stopped and I'm like, holy shit, what's going on? Um, and I turn around and my friend Avi, who's also, he's, they've been a great, um, a great help through everything too. Avi was there and I turn around 
and we made eye contact and I swear we were both gonna cry. And then we just like hugged, <laughs> like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening right now. And I turned back to the, the customer and um, she was like, what's going on? Um, but like, we both were just like so overwhelmed, happy that, cause this was like a, a long shot. We didn't think it was gonna happen. Um, and it did. And, and that told me that I'm worth something to the community and my art is worth something to the community and I can connect with people that way. Um, and that's a, that's a big part of what gave me the confidence to, to go for the studio when Rio offered it to me. Um, I said, you know what, I, I think I should do this. I should just try this because it might be really good for me.